house and rock the 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 house and Back to the beginning of the Switchblade. Um, the, the Switchblade was a, a spin-off of the original crossbow idea, which at the time it launched, it was this kind of all-purpose bow kite that was, um, you know, in my mind, it was a, a real performance kite because it was the first kite that allowed you to control the power as much as you could. As you could. But in the minds of the, a lot of people that didn't really understand it or that, that wrote it for the first time, um, they thought it was a, a very simple to use kind of, you know, not such a performance kite, um, like a C kite. They thought it was like this kind of all purpose model. So the Switchblade originally, when we brought it out, was to have a kite that was a little bit more aimed up at our team guys who were, um, you know, up until then, riding sea kites or unhooking, doing all these, um, you know, freestyle and wake style tricks. And so we wanted to satisfy them. I personally, I was pretty, I was not really on board with the whole bow kite thing. And it wasn't really until the Switchblade came out that, you know, I felt like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to understand what this is about. This actually makes a lot of sense because the Switchblade was sort of, it was like five steps ahead of that very first bow kite that we ever launched and it was really what made I think the switchblade was the big game changer. One of the things that helped the switchblade achieve just you know, mainstream uh, attention was uh, right about the time that we switched from a two to one control system to a one to one and that, that means that our two to one control system used to have pulleys on it so that for every you know inch you pulled it you'd get double that on the on the uh, the D power or the power. And when we went to one to one, it was just exactly that. And the benefit of the one to one was uh, a lot less bar pressure and a lot more direct feel. There wasn't any kind of this slippage or anything. It was just like a straight connection. And me personally, um, I was really into the two to one because I didn't really care so much about the bar pressure. It didn't, didn't bother me. And I liked the idea of being able to achieve all that deep power in such a short amount of space. And it was Pat that was really, really campaigning and pushing to go to this one-to-one -one system. And uh, when yeah, I said, yeah, okay, let's do it, you know, Pat was just right on it. And, and he made the kite 75% better because of it. So when the switchblade became one to one, it was super welcome. It was like, hey, it feels more like what I'm used to rock, you know? Because because there's people coming. There's still remember now, only we're the only ones out there with bow <laughs> So people are still coming off sea cuts. They hop on a crossbow and they're like, ooh man, this seems a beast, you know? And then they hop on the switchblade and they're like, oh, okay, I could get used to this. And then they huck a jump and they're just like, oh my god, you know? This thing just floats like a balloon, you know? So. I think at that point, it's the turning point where the Switchblade became the most popular card in, in the group of cards that we were producing.
have always had this vision, can it just be like windsurfing? Um, I, I just, when, when, when the shit hit the fan on, on the windsurfing rig, I just let go of the boom and it all stops. You know, if we can make kiting like that, we're gonna be the, the leaders in this industry. the switchblade really did was make the sport a lot safer and a lot more accessible to so many people. I mean, back in the day, you had to be a pretty good waterman to even just learn to kite and you would never put your nine-year-old kid on a sea kite because it was just too dangerous. And I think the switchblade just made it that much safer for everyone who wanted to just get involved but wasn't like a hardcore sports person. I think some things kind of take a life of their own and uh, I think reputation is one of those things that that carries something you know pretty far down the road and that's what that's what happened to the switchblade and it it, it really is just like it, it's like a surfboard when you have that magic surfboard you know you, you you try to replace it and you just make a lot of boards in a very similar shape to, to you keep coming back to that it's like a good friend you know um, someone says, yeah, I want a kite that's going to be able to do a lot of different things on a really high level. I would put them on the switchblade and they'd come back super happy. So that's what we did and, uh, and that's what we continue to do. The Switchblade really came about because of the performance and because the riders needed and wanted performance in a kite. And um, the way I see it going in the next 10 years is that we're just going to keep pushing it, we're going to keep refining it, and we're very lucky that Cabrina listens to us 100%.